Hi everybody, I'm Lucas. Welcome to a new Studio One video. In this video, we are going to look into creating marker presets. What does this mean? Well, when starting new songs, we can use markers to bring a bit more structure into our arrangement. Like intro, verse 1, verse 2, chorus, bridge, solo and so on. Or if you are more into orchestral or film music, you might use labels like opening or main A, main B or something similar. But no matter what musical style you're working in, there are probably some labels you use regularly. And then you might get to a point where you ask yourself, why do I have to enter these labels again and again? Why can't I just save them and have buttons or keyboard shortcuts for them? And as you might guess, you can. Let's take a look at how this works. We're going to use macros for that. I know some of you find macros really scary, but I also know that most people, once they really understand what macros are, say, well, it's really not rocket science. Macros are basically just lists of Studio One commands, and that's it. So yes, let's create a macro for our first marker preset. Here's how it works. Everything, or almost everything you do in Studio One actually uses a command behind the scenes. For example, when you press the insert key to create a new marker, or when you click here to add a new marker, what's actually happening is that Studio One runs the insert marker command. You can even see this if you hover over the plus button here, it's called insert marker, and it also shows the shortcut, the insert key. So this is a command that we can trigger with a keyboard shortcut, but we can also use it in a macro. So let's open the macro toolbar and here I'll right click and choose new button. That will create a new button we can assign a macro to. And since we don't have our macro yet, we can right click the button and choose assign and then new macro. That's going to open the macro editor and here on the left we have all the commands that Studio One provides. Instead of browsing through this huge list, you can just type marker into the search field and this shows us all the commands that contain marker, including categories like the marker category with all the commands inside this category. Here we have commands like go to next marker, go to previous marker, all quite useful, but for now we are looking for insert. Here that's our insert marker command, the one we already know. It simply inserts a marker without a name, basically the same as clicking the plus button on the marker track. So that command doesn't really offer us any advantage over what we already have. But let's take a look at the next one, insert named. As you can see, it has a name argument and that's exactly what we need. Arguments allow us to save specific settings within the macro so we don't have to enter them every time. We set them once in the macro and Studio One will apply those settings automatically whenever we run it. So let's double click this command to add it to our macro. That's this list on the right side. Next, I can double click it to open the command arguments window. The argument here is name and this is where I enter the name I want. Then I click OK and now my macro needs a name and I'll just call it insert marker intro. I also like to assign a group. Let's enter markers here. Now let's click OK and now we have a button for our marker. Let's try it out. Click it and as you can see it adds a new marker to our arrangement. You can even create multiple markers with the same name if you just move the cursor to a different position and then just click the button again. That's pretty cool. Now let's add some more marker presets. First, I'd like to have a dedicated group for the buttons because right now it's just in the default group. So I click this panel at the top and choose new group. I can then right click and double click on the group name to rename it to marker presets. To move my button to this new group, I hold control or on macOS you would hold the command key and then drag the button into the new group. Now, if you're thinking we have to repeat the whole process for every new marker preset, no, we don't. We can just right click the button and choose duplicate macro. This creates a copy of both the macro and the button. And to change the actual marker name, we right click again and choose edit macro. Here I rename the macro. 
Then double click the name argument and change it to something like chorus. Click OK and exit the macro editor and now we have two marker presets. By the way, you can rename the macro buttons on the toolbar by right clicking them and then double clicking the name. That way you can shorten the labels a bit to save space on the toolbar. Then I'll go ahead and create some more buttons. And I'm going to speed up the video a bit here. OK, I've created some more buttons and these let me place the cursor and quickly add new markers. Another marker and another one. You can even do this during playback or even during recording, which can be extremely useful too if you're recording and just want to make some quick markers with predefined names. Just click the different buttons and they'll add markers with the correct names. If you want, you can even create keyboard shortcuts for these macros. Just go to Keyboard Shortcuts here in the Studio One menu, enter the name of the macro, choose a key and click Assign. And then you can run these macros from a key on your keyboard. One more thing. Some of you might be wondering why I'm using markers instead of arranger sections. You could create a similar macro for sections as well, but for simply marking specific points in time, I usually prefer markers. That said, if you ever decide to switch to arranger sections later, there's a really neat trick. Just right click on a marker and choose create arranger sections from markers. And just like that, you've got sections. You can then delete the markers or keep them or just hide the marker track. That's totally up to you. That's it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this tutorial and please consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me create more content for you. And if you don't own Studio One Pro yet, check out the link in the description to learn more about it. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.